Willow Valley Film Festival audience, we're so happy to have you here. Um, I want to share with you that this has been one of my favorite films um, that we have in the catalog for the 43rd Mill Valley Film Festival. I saw Binti for the first time um, at Sundance and have kept the film in my mind. I really hope that you enjoyed it. And we have the pleasure today of, um, I have the pleasure of hosting a Q&A with a director of Binti, Frederike Migom. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Yes, you are. All right, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome, I'm very happy to be here. Um, a question that I have about the film that I think is very curious. I wanna go into your, um, your path as a filmmaker shortly, but the first question I have is, how was it possible for you to take such a complex subject as, um, as immigration and the struggles that immigrants face and turn it into like a lighthearted family film? Um, I think I wanted to do that because um, in the period of writing and developing the story and everything, I was working a lot with kids in a school here in Brussels. Um, and a lot of those kids have very difficult situations. Um, but in the first place, when I'm there and when they're in school and when they're with each other, they're mostly just kids and their situation does not identify, I mean, who they are and, 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 and how they, you know. And so I wanted, I wanted these characters not to be their situation or their victim, but to, to first be who they are and have the situation more be like, you know, something they have to deal with. And I think that was why I found it very important for them to also have fun, for them to also love, smile, and all those things, because it's, you know, it's not because everything's shit that you can't do that anymore. Uh, yeah, so that's... Well, I think it feels like that part of it makes it really relatable for students who may not have experiences with immigration issues, but still just understand the love that a, and the passion that a, a daughter has for her father and the connection that they have uh, together. So I thought that was incredibly special. How long have you been thinking about making this film? How did this narrative fall into your lap? And give us a little bit of a history of you as a filmmaker. Yeah. Um, but by the way, to, to add on to that previous question, it was um, hard because I think throughout the whole process, knowing that I wanted to make this kind of warm love film with this uh, subject, I did realize that the, the risk or the, the, the thing I was scared of was that I wouldn't uh, respect or take seriously enough the issues in the film and that I guess was a was really a balance to find and something that I at times really struggled with and, and really made sure to find that because I think that's then the danger but so just to say that that I did always try to keep that in mind and then how did it actually didn't really fall into my lap the story it, it really was um was created in the sense that I knew that I wanted to, uh, there were a few elements that I knew I wanted. I wanted a girl, I wanted a kind of a, a hero, and I wanted mostly a girl who claims her space in society rather than kind of sit around waiting for it to be given to her. I wanted, um, yeah, that, I guess. That's kind of where it started. And then everything else was built around it, sort of, from, you know, kids I had met, um, my own experience. I mean, I think Elias is then kind of like a combination of my two brothers. And I think Binti's dreams are, I think, kind of my dreams when I was a child. I mean, completely separate from the, obviously, from the situation in which she, she finds herself. And you know, all these elements were then then added, but I think the, the idea started really with that character, this girl that I wanted to portray. Yeah, I, I would actually love to go into that a little bit more because I just really appreciate the idea of young girls, especially young black girls watching this film um, and identifying with like, 
having like a big project and feeling like a superhero and feeling like very powerful in, in doing um, in doing something um, that is also just kind of good for the world. Um, can you share us with us a little bit more about uh, about Binti, uh, the actress, uh, the character, how you made the two uh, connect with one with one another? She did a an, an fantastic job, um, and also maybe just note uh, the special relationship between Binti and her father in the movie and in real life. Right. Um... So Binti, the character, um, well, yes, like I said, I wanted her to be someone who claims and who takes and who owns, um, because who knows she deserves also, you know? Um, and then I, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's not an easy part to play at all because that kind of confidence and um, energy it's, it's not easy. I mean, I, I, I've always kind of known that it's much easier. I mean, that's maybe not very fair to say to actors, but generally it's much easier to play someone who's a bit shy and da -da -da than to be so outspoken because it's, you know, it's hard. And I guess as, an, as a person too, to, in order to play that, you have to kind of, and so I, can't, I think I cast about a hundred girls, which is really not a lot um, compared to like American standards, I think, but we're a small country. <laughs> And uh, yeah, there was just only a hundred, I guess. And uh, she was the best. I mean, there were, it took a long time for me to realize because first of all, she was very young. Mm -hmm. um, she was only nine when she auditioned for a character who's 12. Um, so in the beginning I was like, no way. But then she looks much older and she just, I mean, she was just the best, and um, she had also Congolese origins, which I then, which I then thought was, I mean, people could probably not see it on the screen, but I think for me then that was also important. And um, and yeah, then I guess a gift to the gift was that her dad is actually a musician here, who I knew completely separately from this project, and who at some point told me, can I audition for your film? And I was like, Arr? I didn't even know he acted. Um, so I was like, yeah, sure. And then he and his daughter were actually auditioning separately. And then it took me like six months, I think, to be like, let's put the two of you together. And then only then did I realize how powerful the energy was between the two of them because they're 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 as I mean a lot of the things in the film are real I mean they're the the love for each other is so real and so kind of pure and the, the way they speak like he speaks French she speaks Flemish mm -hmm. and they mix it up kind of it's all the way they speak in real life so then I realized it was just a gift so that's how that happened thank you for sharing um yeah it's a very special actress and uh, very special, special relationship. It was just really a, a joy, uh, a joy to watch. Um, can you share with us a little bit how um, you're finding the success of your film and where you are right now in Belgium? Um, it's the, well, it's, it's good. I mean, I think it's been doing quite well. Um, before we went to Sundance in February, we had we had done kind of a year of 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 um of touring here and we did this really big festival in Amsterdam where we won which was really cool i think Cinekid is the biggest children's media film festival um so that was really nice and i think the film's been the mo the most fun for me is that i've i've been at a lot of schools um talking to a lot of children and I think that's the most important because there's real conversation and I have parents and teachers telling me afterwards that they that the kids asked questions and that they were kind of forced into having difficult conversations mm -hmm. with their mm -hmm. kids and I think that's then that makes me happy that's that's cool so uh, it's nice <laughs> yeah are, are, are parents uh, or and educators teachers are they able to process the very 
um, like traumatic relationship that Belgium has with the Congo as um, uh, you know a colonized country, and you know the the monarchy was not kind to the country or its people. There are still huge immigration issues as uh, the film shows. Um, do you find that educators and, and parents are able to talk about that difficult, painful history? No, here, no. I mean, sorry, that I mean some probably, but no, I think here mostly, and it's quite interesting because it really depends from country to country. Like I have inter I've done interviews in, in various countries and, and, and some countries don't mention it at all. And some countries automatic, you know, right away ask the question. In Belgium, nobody asked the question. Um, there is a clear link in the film and it's an extra layer. I mean, they didn't have to come from Congo, I suppose. The, the story isn't per se, but for me, that was really important. Yes, because of the relationship that the country has with Congo because my father was born in Congo. So that's how close it is. Um, it's, it's part of my family also. And I somehow needed to make that a, a part of the film. And I also really wanted that country to be not just like, you know, and I mean, and this is not to say anything about other films, but you know, often you have like immigrants in film or, or um, undocumented immigrants in film and they come from like, some big bad evil country uh, uh -huh. but i didn't want that to be the case because sure congo has you know its problems but it's also really it's also a very impressive beautiful place that that deserves to also to have really its place and and to have its identity because it has so and having that there and having um Congo in there and then the reference of the Okapi and the, you know, I, I, I clearly try to make clear references to our own history with the country. And yeah, no, it actually struck me. And I also was quite prepared for questions and for, you know, because I, I mean, I think I've, I've done some study also and, bef you know, before doing the film. In Belgium, I think everyone talked about the immigration aspect and everybody liked the fact that you know, I'm showing kind of a, a different side of the people behind, you know, the, but nobody really talked about the, no, it, uh, this country I think is known to be very difficult with all that. Now it's changing a little bit again, um, but it, it remains to be very, very hard. And I sometimes regret it because I was ready for it, but then right. I feel else. I feel also like because it's maybe a kid film that they didn't want to, I don't know, but no, actually here I got very little of those questions. And the kids That's in the cinema, they don't even, I think, really know. Um, right, right. So, yeah, no. But I was right. going to ask you, ask you about that, if that even is a part of um, the curriculum of, of what students learn about their own history in Belgium. I mean, you have three issues here in the film, it seems like. Um, you know, you have the colonization, uh, uh, a conversation about colonization, you have a conversation about racism, and you have a conversation um, about immigration. There's just so much to go in. And I, and I really hope that educators are, you know, um, able to take advantage to, uh, to use the film and, and really analyze it and educate their kids on their own history and the history of other countries. Was that something that you set, set out to do when you made the film or is that just kind of like a very meaningful um, other aspect of Binti? No, I mean, was I, did I set out to have educate, to have it be an educational thing? Yes. Um, good question. I mean, no, I don't think I really extensively thought of how can this film be educational because then I think it gets dangerous to be too moralistic and all that. Mm -hmm. But I do think that I, ha I mean, I, I was aware of the sensitivities that go, that come with, all three of those um, layers. Um, and I wanted to um, 
to be aware of what I was telling, to not just tell the story, but... Um, what, what it sounds like to me is that Belgium has a really complicated relationship to this that it really hasn't dealt with, and maybe like your own personal struggles in coming to an understanding of, of you know, what that means for you and maybe your family as well and in relationship to the art that you're trying to make that yeah. I mean, maybe it was like a learning experience for you as well. Completely. And I, I, exactly. I mean, I think when you take on a story like that, you, it's more than just a story, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think I was aware of that and I, I wanted to, that it would be more than, um, a cute story with a happy end. Right. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. So yes, maybe, but I didn't want to be moralistic either. Ah, uh, right. Yeah. Oof, that was a difficult question. Um, <laughs> um I tried to. I'm, I'm trying to punch up here. I'm. I'm I, I always good. say that. Uh, I always say that I don't. I'm. I'm not in this to like educate kids. I'm in this to like educate young revolutionaries. I'm always trying to find like an angle for students to like you know, to, to think a little bit deeper about what's, you know, being presented to them. And there's so much to work with here for, for teachers and for students. So I, yeah. I, I really appreciate that about the film so much. I, I guess maybe that's also an answer to the question. Maybe I, my, I never considered my role to be an educator. I'm not, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a filmmaker in the first place. Right. But you do have to be aware, I think, of what you're making and what impact it can have uh, and, and use that, I guess, without wanting to be an educator, if that right. makes sense. No, that, that, makes, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I wanna close off here by um, asking you about um, maybe if young black girls are watching this movie and they see themselves reflected in the main character, what message would you uh, like for them to walk away with after watching the film? I would like them to walk away with um, knowing that they have the space, they deserve the space, they should claim the space, and they don't even have to yell as hard as Binti, you know? <laughs> Not only the ones who, who go like, deserve them. Everybody deserves that space, you know, every single one of them. And, and I think that's very important to never forget, for sure. All right. Thank you so much, Federica. I uh, enjoyed our time and I look forward to working with you. Um, audience, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. Uh, check out the rest of the catalog for the 43rd No Valley Film Festival. We have a lot of great films and we hope that you um, enjoy the rest of the season. Thank you. Thank you for joining. And uh, if you have questions, get in touch on Instagram. I'll, I'm there. And uh, thanks for watching the film. And thanks for having me. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>